Hi, I'd like to take a minute to show you a new animation involving thunder and lightning that will be installed at Pittsburgh's Children's Hospital on a model railroad layout. The hardware and software are fairly straightforward, but I think you'll agree that the effect is, uh, is pretty good. Let me disconnect the power for a minute. That does get a little bit uh, wearing after a time. The device that makes it all happen is this circuit board. It has an Arduino uh, Pro Mini. It has a DF player, which I've used on a lot of other projects. That's an MP3 player that interfaces nicely with the Arduino. Uh, a voltage regulator. I've got a heat sink on top of here because I'm taking 12 volts into this, bringing it down to 5, and that dissipates quite a bit of heat because this DF player uh, draws a good bit of current. Uh, there is a MOSFET right here. This is an N-channel MOSFET, an IRL520. Uh, That's what connects to the LEDs that we're flashing. And all the other thing we need is a speaker or amplified speakers if you want it to be really loud and some sort of LEDs to flash. I'm using two different uh, sets of LEDs. Up here is a set of LED string lights that works rather nicely, and this is an LED spotlight. I'm not sure which of these, maybe both, that will be used at Children's Hospital. Uh, to get it all operating, you also need to have some thunder, and that's a, an MP3 file that is saved on this uh, uh, micro SD card and plugged into the the DF player okay I'd like to take a minute to talk a little bit about the software that's on this and for that we'll move over to the computer the software that makes everything happen with the thunder and lightning is shown over here uh, there's one library that has to be included that's the uh, DF player uh, mini mp3 library uh, there are some variables that are initialized along here. Uh, the important one is sensor pin equals A0. A0 is an analog pin on the Arduino, and it is connected directly to the speaker output of the DF player. So this pin is able to look at the value, the analog value, of the amount of volume, if you will, that comes out of that speaker. And we'll use that in a second. There's a button also that, uh, that we use to uh, detect when you press a button. Uh, the setup section right here does, again, some initialization. It turns on the serial at 9600. And then right here, we do some initialization of the, uh, the DF player. For the MP3, we set the volume to 30, which is about the maximum. We do that right here. Now, the most important part, of course, is the main loop. And the first thing we do there at the top, right here, is we sit and wait until you press the button. When you press the button, that's when the thunder and lightning starts. Let me start up the terminal so we can look at that. Over here it says waiting for button push, and that's what we saw right there. So right here, it just sits and waits. As soon as you hit the button, it will print on the screen over here, button hit, MP3 play one. I have four different Thunder uh, audio files. I like number one the best, and that's the one that I'm using. I could certainly put a random in here and have it choose one of those four. And down here is where the sound and light actually happens. It's a do while loop. It tells it to do all of this stuff while the busy pin shows that an mp3 file is being played. So what does it do? It reads the analog pin to see how loud the sound is coming out of the speaker. It'll print that over here on the terminal and then it says if that sensor value is greater than, equal to, greater than or equal to 750. And 750 worked well for me. That may or may not be a good number depending upon the type of file you use but 750 is good for me. What happens if it's nice and loud at 750? It'll print out that we found a large number and it turns on the LED lights. Then, if the sensor value 
is lower than or equal to 666. And again, that's a number that just worked for me. What does it do? It turns off the LEDs. And again, it stays in this loop until it's no longer being played. Let's fire it up by pressing the button. And you can see what happens over here. It's printing out all of those analog readings. And whenever it's quiet, you'll see that it continues off to the right in quite a long string. There it goes. And whenever it hears a loud noise, that's when it comes back and puts some carriage returns in and returns everything to the left-hand side of the screen. Okay, pretty straightforward software, not particularly difficult to understand, and it does work rather well. The only thing you might need to play with is this 750 and 666 uh, to determine when your lights come on and when they go off.